Some people love from the waist up and some people love with the top down. Some people love you like you're somebody above you and some people call it love and then they treat you like dirt. So why don't we just start with the eye to eye and why don't we just start with the lips to lips. Yeah, sure, I can kiss your whatever at one time or another, and you can bite whatever in mine, but why don't we just start with the kiss to kiss, with the beat and in rhyme? Why don't we just start with the reel to reel? Why don't we just start with the toe to toe, arm and arm and hip to hip? Why don't we just start with the face to face, eye to eye and breath to breath? Some people make love like a weekend sport, they even have leagues to hear them talk. It's an antidepressant, a gold mine for gossip, a dietary supplement of sorts. But why don't we just start with the love to love? And why don't we just start with the side by side? Why don't we just start with strength to strength? Why don't we just start with risk to risk? Why don't we just start with the heart to heart? Why don't we just start with the kiss to kiss? can't surrender to your syndrome. I can't make my thoughts be one with yours. I can't surrender to your syndrome. No, not me. They say that two become one flesh sometimes, just like it says in the Bible, but it never says that the two become one mind. I can't synchronize with your assumptions or suck up to your sympathies. I can't be saddled with your sentiments. No, not me. You got your cutesy little phrases that you always like to speak in. But as much as I like to talk like you, when I feel the words begin to form, I stop myself right there. I'm not descending into the dictatorship of your tongue inside my mouth. You got your favorite foods that you like to eat. In earnest love for them, I start to feel. I desire to pick some up on my way back home. But abnegation negates my appetite, and unrest flares in my central square. You may possess some certain parts of me, but my tastes are still at liberty. I can't get pickled in your priorities. No, not me. I can't surrender to your syndrome. I can't make my thoughts be one with yours. I can't surrender to your syndrome, no, not me. I can't tolerate the tyranny of listening to that music that you always seem to have on, playing in the background from somewhere. I don't hear it. I don't hear you humming. I don't share your joy. I got a different set of voices that I try to listen to they're just not going to let me harmonize with you. I can't surrender to your syndrome. I can't make my thoughts be one with yours. I can't surrender to your syndrome. No, not me. So, I looked up my Chinese horoscope again. Uh, somebody asked me about it, and I knew uh, I'd looked at it before, but I didn't remember too much. And all that kind of stuff is interesting, you know, but <clears throat> it seems like there's always just enough that sounds right to enable to, you to gloss over the other parts that don't. <laughs> so, it was the hour of the tiger and the year of the dog when I was born. Uh, that's supposed to mean, according to one account, that I'm tirelessly active and courageous. <laughs> well, there's a clear 50-50. <clears throat> I was tirelessly active, all right. A generation later, I probably would have been medicated. <laughs> but my, my folks took me to a chiropractor, and he wondered if I might have St. Vitus dance. I think I was like a computer that's overclocked, trying to process all this information of this century called 20th that I found myself to have been born in. And I just had to wear myself out to be able to get to sleep. But courageous? My favorite biblical figure was Jonah. 
He had to be dragged kicking and screaming to do what he was supposed to do, by a whale no less. Which reminds me of that Volkswagen Super Beetle my mother had that she used to drive us to school in. That was my Jonah's whale. And among the Christian saints, my, I always liked Saint Thomas More because he was the martyr that said, this is not the stuff that martyrs are made of. I'm with you, Tom. Me neither. But it was the month of the rooster, my birthday. Roosters are supposed to be funny, witty, clever at finance, and confident. Well, I could be funny and witty. <laughs> when I was in high school, I used to rewrite the lyrics of popular songs to make jokes about classmates. And then I'd make copies on a hectograph and get the other guys to sing along before class. But I never felt confident. <clears throat> I felt more like I was skating on thin ice all the time, just trying to have friends. I could go on, but basically this is why I never delve deeper into things like Chinese horoscopes. What's more interesting is to remember where I was the other time I looked this up. It was the early 1980s. I was living in a building on East 2nd Street over here. And if you go there now, there's a little plaque on the door that says that Allen Ginsberg once lived in that building, but <clears throat> we didn't know that at the time. It was just some friends of a friend who had an extra room, and I needed one because my girlfriend had just got a new boyfriend and busted up our happy home in Bushwick. <laughs> anyway, the friends were Jeff and Gloria and Floop the cat and Bass the dog. We called Bass the noble creature. Jeff and I did anyway. Uh, he was what you might call a mixed heritage or you might call him a mutt. But to us he was a gentleman and a scholar of the canine persuasion. I know, people always say these things about their dogs, but he just give you that look. But it's true, he just give you that look and you knew that he knew. But I had this micro-sized room off the kitchen. The bed took about half the floor space, so I painted the floor yellow to make it look bigger. But I spent a lot of time on the couch uh, with Jeff and Bass. And, uh, uh, that was uh, the boys' club. Gloria would be in the back room uh, studying or reading, and Fluke, besides being a kitty, was also a girl, so they hung out together in there. That's when we first hooked up the TV to the stereo and had the beginnings of home theater. And we liked to watch hockey games, because it was so cool to hear the puck slide across the ice and hit the, hit the boards. Uh, the Chinese horoscope said I was a fire dog. But I felt more like a hangdog in the aftermath of my love affair dying off. So I watched the puck slide back and forth. I liked it when it hit the boards and made a thump. Otherwise, it was all like snare drums and brushes, oh, whooshing and scraping. Sometimes the players got into fights and they'd thump against the boards. That gave it a little more bass line. But it occurred to me that bass was more like the rooster, even though he was a dog. Because he was the one that liked to jump up and answer the door. Myself, if I'm a rooster, I don't see me as the cockfight contender type. I just see a bird that doesn't fly. But I was out uh, in my wanderings. I used to walk around the neighborhood to walk off the stress. And I found this big roll of butcher paper. And uh, it had gotten wet on one side with stains so the Butcher couldn't use it, but I brought it home and we started unwrapping it and writing on it with the felt tip pens. And it occurred to me, wow, this is just like Jack Kerouac's scroll. <laughs> Except his was a more manageable size. He couldn't really fit this in a typewriter. <laughs> so we made a lot of scrolls and messed up the house with them. And, but before we got tired, I wrote this song about, uh, about a bird that doesn't walk. <laughs> I mean, a bird that doesn't fly. So, thank you to the Chinese horoscope for that. But, uh, so the dog is the rooster, and I play the dog, and Jeff, well, he was kind of like a horse or a monkey or something, but he said he always felt like he was part dog. So it was as much a dog's club as a boy's club. And Jeff said, right, Bass? Oof. One bark means yes, right? Oof. So, uh, when somebody would come to the door, 
We never wanted to get up to answer it. But Bass always did. So uh, when he'd start to bark, we started uh, you know, barking along with him to try to get his, his cadence. And then once we got a, a handle on that, we started trying to make this uh, dog bark, human shout fusion, where you could kind of use the bark as a, a carrier and modulate it with words. Go, woof, woof, nobody home. <laughs> woof, nobody home. Woof, woof, nobody home but us dogs. <laughs> Home this so anyway, if I got two more minutes, I want to do the song. Just, uh, you got four minutes. Okay. Then I can sing some. Uh, this is the scroll. I guess this is getting in the way of the video. Uh, got a little app here on the iPhone. To uh, let's see if this works. Here we go. Climbing down the street to my stupid job. Climbing down the street to my stupid job. I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird. Walking. Sure, I fly, yeah, I know. But it's like I can't think about that now. Times are tough, I gotta scratch a bit. I gotta survive somehow. But mark my word, I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird walking. Hey lady, how'd you like to dance a bit? We could bust up our minds. Your turtle love you, don't you wanna? Shake and bop, it'd be so fine. You look like a bird. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean like a bird. You're like a bird walking. I was in a spot, so it took this job. It's not what I want. It's not really me. But God will, damn it. I won't have to tell him to. Just you wait and see. I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird. I'm like a bird walking. Yeah.